Today we're deep diving into everyone's favorite three syllable supplement, creatine. And unlike protein powder that's been sitting in your cabinet since 2019, this one's actually worth talking about. After decades of research and countless gym bros singing its praises, creatine has earned its spot as the most well-researched and effective natural performance enhancing supplement on the market. So what is creatine? Let's start with the basics. So creatine isn't some lab created super compound invented by scientists in white coats, though they do love studying it. It's actually something that your body makes naturally, kind of like that self doubt before a first date, except creatine is actually useful. Your liver and kidneys team up to produce around one to two grams of creatine daily, like a tiny supplement factory running 24 seven. But here's where it gets interesting. About 90 to 95% of your body's creatine hangs out in your muscle cells, probably posting gym selfies and talking about gains. While we can get some creatine from food, particularly beef and fish, you need to eat several pounds of meat daily to match what a simple supplement can provide. And let's be honest, your wallet and your digestive system probably won't like that approach. So let's talk about how creatine works. So here's the deal. Creatine helps your body produce something called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Think of ATP as your body's energy currency, except you can't use it to buy protein shakes. When you're doing anything intense, like sprinting, lifting weights, or trying to open that impossibly tight jar of pickles, your body is rapidly burning through ATP. Here's where creatine comes in. So creatine helps replenish it faster by combining with phosphate to form creatine phosphate, which then donates the phosphate to ADP to form more ATP. It's kind of like having a backup generator for your muscles. This process is particularly crucial during high intensity short duration activities, like when you're trying to push through those last few reps or simply trying to sprint and catch the bus that you're about to miss. During this, your body is rapidly depleting its ATP stores. So having more creatine in your system means you can maintain that high intensity output for just a little bit longer. Instead of failing at rep eight, maybe you're gonna make it to rep 10. And in the world of progressive overload, those extra reps can make all the difference. So let's talk a little bit more about the benefits. So when it comes to pure performance enhancement, creatine is like that overachieving student who actually deserves their perfect grades. Study after study has shown that creatine supplementation can significantly improve power and strength output. So we're talking about the ability to lift heavier weights, jump higher, and also sprint faster. So the beauty of creatine strength enhancing effects is that they're not just temporary, unlike that pre-workout buzz that leaves you feeling like you could bench press a car. Please don't try that. Instead, creatine helps you perform better during your workouts, which leads to better training adaptations over time. Think of it as compound interest for your muscles. So here's where things get really interesting. Remember that annoying gene called myostatin that prevents excessive muscle growth? Well, creatine actually helps suppress it. It's like telling your body's overly cautious parent to chill out a bit and let you grow. And this isn't just bro science. Recent research has actually shown that creatine directly influences muscle growth pathways. Beyond that, creatine pulls water into your muscle cells, creating a bit of a more anabolic environment. This cell volumization not only makes your muscles look a little bit fuller, you know, sleeve filling arms, but it also triggers muscle protein synthesis and reduces protein breakdown. Most people can expect to gain about two to three pounds of lean mass in their first month of creatine supplementation. And honestly, that might not sound like much, but considering it typically takes six months to gain that much muscle naturally, it is pretty impressive. Now there are some brain benefits as well. Creatine is not just for meatheads. Your brain actually uses a lot of ATP and guess what helps with ATP production? That's right, our good old friend creatine. So research has shown that significant improvements in cognitive function, particularly in vegetarians and vegans who typically have lower baseline creatine levels. The mental benefits extend beyond just feeling a little bit more alert. There are studies that have shown improved working memory, better mental clarity, and more enhanced focus as well. It's even being studied for its potential benefits in treating traumatic brain injuries and neurodegenerative diseases. Think of it kind of like a pre-workout for your brain, minus all the tingles and the urge to run through walls. Now let's talk about something that doesn't get enough attention, and that's creatine's potential role in mental health. And no, we're not just talking about the temporary serotonin or dopamine boost you get from hitting a new PR. Remember how we mentioned creatine helps your brain cells make more ATP? Well, it turns out that that might be more important than we initially thought. So there are several studies that have shown some fascinating connections between creatine and mood. A 2012 study found that women with depression who added creatine to their antidepressant treatment saw improvements twice as fast as those taking antidepressants alone. There are brain scans of people with depression and they often show reduced creatine levels in certain areas of the brain. It's like their brain's battery is running on low power mode. Vegetarians and vegans, again, who typically have lower creatine levels, often show great improvements in mood when supplementing with creatine. So sometimes meat-free doesn't mean worry-free. So the theory goes something like this. First, depression can impair your brain's energy metabolism. Imagine trying to run Netflix on a 15 year old smartphone. Two, creatine helps provide more energy to brain cells. Three, better energy availability might help brain cells communicate a bit more effectively. And four, more effective brain cell communication could mean better mood regulation. Simple as that. 
Think of it like upgrading your brain's energy grid from an old generator to a modern power plant. It's not gonna solve everything, but having more reliable power sure helps things run smoother. Now here's a disclaimer, before you throw away your prescribed medications and start double scooping creatine, please don't do that. Remember this, creatine is not a replacement for professional mental health treatment. It's more of like a supporting actor than the star of the show. If you're dealing with depression, make sure you talk to a mental health professional. They're like personal trainers for your mind, except you don't have to do any burpees. Now let's talk a little bit more about recovery and endurance. So contrary to popular belief, creatine isn't just for strength and power athletes. Endurance athletes can also benefit as well, primarily through improved recovery. Creatine has been shown to reduce muscle damage and inflammation after long training sessions. It's like having a built-in recovery boost that works 24-7. Additionally, creatine has been shown to improve glucose metabolism, making it potentially beneficial for blood sugar control. And this isn't just good news for diabetics, actually better glucose regulation. Better glucose control means better energy management during those long training sessions. So enough about the science, let's talk about how to take it without making it complicated. Remember when people used to treat creatine loading like nuclear physics? The good news is it doesn't have to be that complex. So let's break down the two main approaches to creatine supplementation. So first off, let's talk about the simple approach, which is the one that I recommend. So the no nonsense way of taking creatine is surprisingly simple. Just take five grams daily, preferably pre or post workout, and you are done. No complicated timing, no need to mix it with specific foods, no need to solve complex mathematical equations to figure out your dose. Just take it consistently and let science do its thing. And again, the best part is that timing is not crucial. While post-workout might be optimal due to increased nutrient uptake, the difference is minimal. The key is just consistency, getting it in every single day. Think of it like brushing your teeth. It's more important that you do it daily than obsessing over the perfect technique or the perfect timing. Now for the old school approach, which is a more optional. So for those who want results slightly faster and don't mind potentially angry bowels, there is the loading protocol, which was popular about 10 years ago and beyond. This involves taking 20 to 25 grams daily for five days, split into four or five doses, and then dropping down the standard three to five grams maintenance dose. So does this work? Yes. Is it necessary? About as necessary as a screen door on a submarine. You'll reach the same saturation levels with the simple approach, just a few days slower. Plus you're gonna save some money and potentially avoid the digestive discomfort that comes with a loading phase. Now, what kind of creatine should you take? Should you take creatine HCL, ethylester? This is the supplement industry's favorite game, taking something that works perfectly fine and making it better by adding unnecessary syllables to its name. So let's break down this marketing masterpiece. So the advanced forms you do not need. Creatine HCL, because apparently adding hydrochloric acid makes everything better. It doesn't. Creatine ethyl ester, sounds fancy, works worse actually. There's buffered creatine for when regular creatine is too unbuffered, I guess. There's creatine nitrate, because who doesn't want their creatine with a side of nitrates, which are not good for you. There's also liquid creatine for when mixing powder with water is too much work. So here's the truth. Good old creatine monohydrate is like the Toyota Corolla of supplements. It's reliable, cost-effective, and gets the job done without any unnecessary flash. In fact, it's the form used in virtually every single study showing creatine's benefits. That's right, all those impressive research results I mentioned earlier, plain old creatine monohydrate. Creatine monohydrate is absorbed at about 99% efficiency. Sorry, advanced absorption marketing team. It's the most studied form, like thousands of studies more than the fancy versions. It's significantly cheaper, you know, more money for actual food in this case. And it's what was used in almost all the positive research studies, you know, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The only slight exception here is micronized creatine monohydrate, which is literally just regular creatine monohydrate grounded into finer particles. The benefit with this one is that it mixes a bit better in water, and that is literally it. That is the only acceptable upgrade, and even then, it's like choosing between a regular Toyota Corolla and the one with slightly better cup holders. Now let's talk about some myths. First one is the kidney myth. The idea that creatine damages your kidneys is about as accurate as thinking chocolate milk comes from brown cows. So this misconception arose because creatine supplementation increases creatinine levels in the blood, which is normally used as a marker for kidney function. However, this increase is simply a result of having more creatine in your system, not because of kidney damage. Numerous studies have shown creatine to be safe for healthy individuals, even those with a single kidney. Now let's talk about cycling. Remember when everyone said you need to cycle creatine? Yeah, again, that's a about as necessary as a parachute in a submarine. Your body doesn't become immune to creatine, nor does it stop producing its own when you supplement. You can take this one continuously for a long time and still reap the benefits. If you stop taking it, it takes about four to six weeks for your levels to actually return back to baseline. Now for our favorite myth, the hair loss myth. So the hair loss fear mostly stemmed from one study that found that creatine might increase DHT levels slightly. But here's the thing, if you're gonna lose your hair, it's because of your genetics, not because of creatine. You might as well blame your baldness on protein shakes or that one time you forgot to re-rack your weights. 
So who should consider creatine? Strength athletes and bodybuilders are obvious candidates, but the benefits, again, extend far beyond the weight room. Vegans and vegetarians stand to benefit significantly since they get less dietary creatine. I think even students and professionals might appreciate the cognitive benefits as well. Again, endurance athletes can benefit from improved recovery and also reduce muscle damage as well. And if you have some mood issues, creatine might be your friend as well. So who might want to skip it? If you're in a weight class sport, the water retention from creatine, you know, typically one to three pounds might be unwanted. Those with pre-existing kidney issues should talk to their own healthcare provider. And if you're allergic to making gains, well, that's actually not a thing, but you get the point. Creatine is one of the few supplements that delivers on its promises without emptying your wallet or filling you with false hopes. Take five grams daily, stick to basic creatine monohydrate and just be consistent. That is literally it. No magic, no nonsense, just results backed by science. And remember, while it won't turn you into a superhero, it might just help you become a slightly better version of yourself. And in the world of supplements, that's about as good as it gets. And that is it. Thank you for watching. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see next, and I will catch you in the next one.